All right, folks, so we're taking a look at this dipole antenna that I put together. It is for 10 meters because we want to go have some fun on 10 meters. Uh, I actually built this um, center point and ballon in the video a couple of years ago. And uh, everybody's like, that's never going to last. But um, here it is. We just have some wing nuts and I can put on any elements that I want. So I've used this in the past for 40, 20. And then today I just cut elements for 10 meters. And we'll talk about those in a second. Um, when I put this together, I didn't do the best job and just being honest, like if you could see this one-to-one -one choke that I put on here, I wound the speaker wire and uh, I got a lot of grief about that. Um, it seems to work. Okay. I don't really have a problem with it. I should rewrap that with a, maybe a Teflon coated wire. That's a little bit more robust than the speaker wire, but this is just cheap speaker wire here. And if you look at this antenna in terms of parts, we're probably looking at like $15, a uh, couple bucks for the connector pieces and the toroid and a couple dollars worth of wire and then just a 3D print. This 3D print was designed by a guy named Kevin Lauchlin, I think is how he says his last name. And he has a YouTube channel called This Old Tech Guy. And he did this design a couple of years ago and he shares it on Thingiverse. And he has one version where you can use a BNC connector like I've done here. And then he has one for an SO239. I believe he does. And um, his original design, I don't think, facilitated the toroid. And uh, so I just kind of squeezed it in there. Um, this one just happened to fit. We got some cable ties holding in place, and we're good to go. So for these elements, what we did is, is that we cut um, nine feet. So we looked at uh, an online dipole calculator from West Mountain Radio, and I think they said eight feet, four inches or something like that for a 10-meter dipole element. Uh, we cut these at nine feet and then we folded them over six inches right here. And so when I initially do this, what I'll do is I'll go out and put this up. We're going to put this on a mast, an inverted V, and I'll take pictures of that. What's really cool about a 10 uh, meter dipole is it doesn't have to be very high up in the air for you to be successful. Uh, I do have 10 meter capability with my Infed half wave dipole, but I wanted to have something a little bit more specific. So that's why we put this together. But as I measure this, and we'll measure on the nano VNA and take a look and, and see what kind of adjustments need to be made, I can go outside and it is very easy for me just to snip and then readjust this fold back and re-zip tie it and measure again. Once I get it dialed in, I can put a little bit more permanent solution, maybe some shrink wrap on here and uh, use something like an s or a clip to clip this to some guiding rope or wire. But uh, it's a very simple configuration way I've got to set up. So let's get it out in the yard and get it on the pole and see what we get. All right, so I'm not telling you to use this wire, but this is the wire that I use. And I use it a lot for different antennas. Like if I'm modeling an antenna or if I'm building just a quick antenna that I'm probably gonna use for a weekend or for an event or if I'm traveling or something like that. But uh, this is relatively cheap. It's uh, Gear IT 18 AWG speaker wire. And uh, I believe you can see this is 200 feet. So if you double it, which, cause it's twin, it's twin wire. Um, it's 400 feet of wire and it was relatively inexpensive. I'll have a link below if you want to check it out. I want to say I paid like $25 for this and I've gone through a couple different spools of this wire. Um, just given its price point for how much wire you get, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of a, even a throwaway wire if, uh, if you're done with it or if it snaps or something like that. You're not out a real big loss, but uh, I just thought I would mention that for folks. So one of the things I wanted to point out was that I, I went out back to set this up and uh, lesson be learned. Make sure that you have all your adapters with you. This could have been uh, catastrophic had I had left the house and gone to a park or to do something like an event somewhere. So you can take a look at the coax that I have run. Is uh, got a PL259 on there. And then uh, my antenna center point for the dipole is a BNC. So I had to come inside and get an adapter. Not too big of a deal. I had to walk in the house and down into the basement to the bench and get it. But uh, if I had to drive and I was far away, the, this could have been really bad. And another thing I wanted to point out, so this is the coaxial cable that I use, and uh, you can see there's some damage there. That is likely from a lawnmower or a weed whacker. I don't know how it happened, but uh, as I was rerunning my coaxial cable in my hand, I kind of felt something like an anomaly, and I knew something uh, had happened. So when I took a look, I did see that I had some damaged coax. Now, this doesn't look like it made its way to the center conductor, so I'm not overly worried about it. Um, I just put some electric tape on there and I uh, kept on trucking, but I'll have to replace that coax. Um, either that or cut this section out and then uh, re-terminate the wire. 
So here's a quick picture of the dipole antenna mounted in its natural habitat. And so I have this uh, MFJ, it's the fiberglass mast, it's a 31 or 32 foot version. Um, I've had it for a few years and it's been out back in the backyard and it's, it's been a fantastic accessory for ham radio. But you can see the dipole is, it's not quite a flat top dipole, I mounted it more of an inverted V but it's close to flat given the height. So we're looking at about 16, 17 feet off the ground, give or take. Um, I didn't have a tape measure to check it, so I kinda, kinda just eyeballed it. But uh, that's what we're playing with, so uh, we'll see how well it performed. So here's a screenshot that I captured off of the VNA, and uh, a couple things to take a look at here. This is a sweep from around 25 megahertz to 30 megahertz, uh, just because I wanted to get the front and back sides of the 10 meter band. And I have two markers on here. I have marker number one and marker number two. So marker number one is 28.075. I didn't have a data point at 074, but this should be good enough. And because I like to do FT8, I wanted to tune the antenna for the FT8 frequency in the 10 meter band. And you can see uh, in the upper left-hand corner that at uh, marker one, we had an SWR of 2.7121. To um, and then you can see number one on the Smith chart. And you can see that uh, we are on the inductive side of the, uh, of, of the Smith chart. I put a marker at number two, uh, the, or the marker at the frequency uh, 25730 because that is actually the resonant point of the antenna and it's actually looking really good right there. So if you take a look at it, the uh, SWR is 1.04 to one, which is fantastic from a matching standpoint, but also from a resonant standpoint, if you take a look at the, uh, at the SWR chart, the marker number two in green is almost exactly on the bullseye. So that's like perfect for that frequency. The problem is we're not gonna operate on that frequency. We're gonna operate at marker one. So what I need to do is I need to trim this particular, um, I need to trim the antenna. So let's go do that and I'll show you what, uh, what came out. Oh no, so here's what happened. I still have the markers at the same spot because I wanted to be able to show or highlight the differences or the delta. And you can see that marker number one has been brought in a little bit, but um, I definitely cut too much off of the dipole. I'm used to working with a little bit larger antennas, so when I went out there, I cut about eight inches off of uh, either side, which was a miscalculation. I should have probably left it at about six inches. Um, that's okay. We have a 1.5 SWR to one, and uh, that's not bad. We can, we can certainly operate there, no problem at all. And then if you just take a look at marker number two, that uh, jumped up to 2.7. But uh, we're close to where we want to be, and then this also gives us some room further up in the band. Uh, over time, the speaker wire will stretch uh, and get a little bit longer, and that might help out with the FT8 frequencies. But again, I think that this is a short-term uh, antenna. It's not, it's not something that I'm going to cherish forever. So if uh, something happens and I need to recut the elements, then uh, it's not really that big of a deal. But I did want to show you the, uh, the differences here. Let's take a look and see at uh, the performance. So here's a little bit of a dump from PSK Reporter, and it's for about the first hour, 45 minutes to an hour that uh, I was operating FT8. I was using the, uh, the Lab 599 TX500, which is a QRP-esque radio. So I was operating at about 8 watts here, and uh, as you can see, I got out uh, pretty good. I was able to uh, span three continents, so uh, I'm not so, um, maybe it's four continents. I'm not so upset about that. Uh, pretty happy there. And I'm uh, going to continue to play around with it. 10 meters is really hot right now, and a large part of that is just the solar conditions that we have as part of cycle 25. So in previous uh, videos, I've mentioned that uh, you can get out and have a lot of fun on 10 meters, and that continues to be true. So I would encourage anybody to go out and put together a simple dipole. It doesn't have to be overly complex or overly engineered to have a little bit of fun. So that's really going to wrap it up. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it.